What is up? This is your LA in a minute. And did you know Vandy Camps makes more than fish sticks? Well, at least they used to. They were the biggest baker in the United States at one point. And this building here in Glacelle Park stems from 1930. Did you also know that they started at Saratoga Chips in 1915? Let's get into some history and some facts about Vandy Camps. In 1913, Theodore and Marion Vandekamp left their native Milwaukee to join sister Henrietta in Pasadena. Henrietta was married to a furniture salesman named Lawrence Frank. Lawrence, in turn, had a brother, Ralph, who was in the potato chip business. The Vandekamp's grandfather had been a baker in Holland. Lawrence loved food, Ralph was making chips, Henrietta and Marion had a gift for showmanship. So the four young people decided to open a potato chip store. In 1915, with an investment of only $200, the family opened their food stand, wearing Dutch costumes to stand out and to connote cleanliness. The store was so tiny that customers couldn't enter. They had to line up at the window to buy chips. The family opened four more stands within a year, and they opened their first coffee shop at 5th and Spring two years later. They soon absorbed a bakery and began selling other baked goods. During World War I, rations limited the product they could use, so they invented a whole grain donut as well as a bread that seemed decades ahead of its time. Whole grain bread. After the war, they continued to expand. In 1921, they built a large bakery near Beverly and Western, and they placed a picturesque blue and white windmill created special for the company by Hollywood art director Harry Oliver. The windmill would become the company's trademark. Lawrence opened a side business a couple years later, the legendary Tam O'Shanter. By 1930, Vandy Camps had 53 bakeries and coffee shops all over Los Angeles, and they built the grand headquarters in Glassell Park. So hopefully you can see the scope and scale of this building, which goes to show the dominance Vandekamps had in the bakery business in the 1930s and beyond. But when it was built, it was built to resemble a Dutch farmhouse. And to this day, 92 years later, remains the only industrial example of Dutch colonial meets Renaissance revival style. Hmm. In 1931, delivery trucks with the trademark logo began rolling out of the factory to deliver their famous blue and white boxes. The company continued to flourish, expanding into the frozen food market. Lawrence flourished as well, opening up the legendary Lowry's Prime Rib on La Cienega in 1938. Theodore died in 1956, and the company sold to General Bakeries the same year. Vandy Camps eventually splintered into two different companies, one for the bakeries and one for frozen foods. But they went bankrupt in 1990. Though the Vandy Camps name is still on the building, that's about all that remains of the old bakery. The windmill is long gone, and so is the original store. The property did undergo a $72 million renovation in 2010 and is now a public LAUSD charter high school. As for Vanny Camps, you can still find the fish sticks in your freezer section. All right, LA, it's been a minute.